Welcome everybody to our Jogdem Boss. Well, allow me to introduce. Uh, this is Tex S. Ranby. This is uh, Rami Santina. This is Alan Samuel. This is Harvey Harrison. Uh, this is Wade Walker. So we are the folks who are on site. And we also represent material of folks uh, who are not on site as well as just projects uh, using Jogdem. Um, our OpenGL, OpenCL, OpenAL uh, modules. So that's actually what we focus on. Um, and in the very end of the BOF, we will show our new features, etc., which you by then may already have recognized. Okay, so this is 10 years of using our uh, tool chain, Eugen, Joggle, and JoAL. So this is like a history timeline. Um, and then Joggle uh, 1, 1 was released in um, 2008, 2009. Uh, five years later, JoCL uh, came into uh, appeared to surface. Uh, in 2009, we also became an independent project. Um, and 2010, uh, we created the, the Joggle uh, project name, set up servers, Git repository, etc. And Unitest, that's the most important thing. Um, yeah, and then 2010, uh, uh, 10, like, um, you know, uh, Joggle is dead long with Joggle, so that was the first uh, release candidate, and this month we finally uh, could swallow the release 202, because, yeah, we were very hesitant to do that. Um, so now finally we are on the release train, and there will be no RCs anymore. We, um, we said we, we have a minor, so we use major, minor, sub minor. And major and minor changes means API changes. So this is used by many tools. I don't count them here now. And so this is just an example. And most of them we will showcase uh, today. So that's a whole purpose, showing what you can do with Joker. Okay. Um, uh, so we'll start with uh, uh, a problem that many people have that are using legacy uh, graphics technology. Um, like uh, they may be using Java 2D, that is mostly using the CPU on many platforms. And the PLD 2D is a project that aims to create um, a Java 2D rendered using OpenGL. So you can slot it in into your existing old uh, uh, Java 2D application and uh, swing the haste exactly as before, except it's painted to an OpenGL canvas and using Java. Okay. Oh. And how it? This is a fitness activity for us. Hi everyone, I'm Marty. Um, I'm the current Java 3D maintainer. Um, Java 3D is a CRAF based uh, 3D API that was started somewhere around 1997 um, at SGI and Sun. Um, it had many releases up until about 2008, where Sun uh, relicensed it as GPL2 with class path exception, and shortly thereafter abandoned it, saying Java FX is the future, coming soon. Um, it had uh, native backends for OpenGL and RedX, and uh, contemporary OS extensions no longer run with those backends. So, uh, so um, February 2012, um, in my professional capacity, I was using Java 3D in our internal application, and was looking at porting to something that Portable and tried uh, doing so to the Joggle 2. Uh, Julian West, who's not here today, did a lot of the initial heavy lifting on that to support it, but it actually ended up being not that much work. Um, good advice for OSX from August uh, Um I'm the current maintainer, I touched it last, so it's mine. Um, and all the native backends have been removed. We rely entirely on Joggle 2 for our hardware acceleration. And we assume Java 6 now, no more Java 1.3 workarounds or 1.4 workarounds, just for our own sanity. Uh, we plan to have no API changes, this is just to keep it working um, for people who are existing users to Java 3D so they don't have to rewrite any of their program, they can continue using it. It does offer them more options for deployment where you no longer have to install any of the DLLs into your virtual machine. You can deploy it as an app or as a web start or however you want to deploy it. Well, yeah, kind of does the heck Tie that together for you. Um, there's one or two regressions on contemporary OSX and Java 7 
and uh, water was that said when that is explored at some point in the final. There's where you can get the fine source code, and uh, there's a forum for kind of other Java 3 d refugees. Um, if you want to play with us, please do. So, uh, Sweet Home 3D. Uh, no, you, uh, that's fine. Um, is a is one such user who um, had tried our our version of drop replacement for their Java 3D use um, to fix problems on Java 7 and OS X. Um, they use it currently only for their output version. Um, as soon as the other OS X regressions are are fixed, um, we're waiting for update 40. Then uh, they'll probably push it across a wider variety of users. They get probably 20 users a day on our output um, for Java 7 and Mac OS X only and that's quite a small proportion of the users so we expect much wider use at that point. This is the, uh, the main screen. It's a, it's a program for kind of doing a decorating and layout of the home and uh, you can print out very nice ray trace renderings of it after you're done. Uh, it's quite, quite a nice program. I'm afraid I don't have a demo of it today. Um, another uh, user is uh, Vzone, who is an educational tool um, actually representing a real-world toy called uh, Zone that uh, students can uh, can uh, play with to design their design their constructions before actually doing it in the real world. Okay. Have a demo of this one. So this demo we've deployed is just a local jar file. software by the, um, I believe it's the University of Arizona, their planning team for planning observations of Saturn. Uh, the Cassini probe is currently orbiting there and the BIMS instrument on there is uh, doing different measurements of the uh, planets and planet and its moons. Um, it's a planning tool that they can visualize the likely observations they're going to get um, for a given set of control inputs and it's run as purely a, um, a client side only all the other data for security reasons lives on the server and presents them this uh, this kind of planning screen for the analyst to to plan their observations uh, in advance. And for them, um, it was again a drop-in solution, and they no longer had to actually touch the client machines. They can now serve the entire application um, as a as a web start applet, and there was no longer any install step required, and avoided any any source code changes on their part, which they were very reluctant to do. Um, the danger is any kind of introduced bugs for them are, are pretty critical. So that's uh, my part. Okay, so to, to have a good, good uh, test bed for testing stuff and uh, on uh, mobile and desktop, because that's our story, to, to you know, cut the development uh, cycles short, um, use one code base, etc. and so forth. Um, you might heard we have the OpenGL profiles and common profiles for desktop and mobile. So we use Jake 2 as a test bed for, uh, for the new uh, Joe AL and for uh, for this job on ES1 and ES2 common profiles. Uh, so this is now using our, we call it N applet, new applet. So it's using our GlueGN native library lib loader. Uh, so now the website is using Joe AL. And uh, no, you can keep it on. It's a demo for Joy L. <laughs> yeah. And so this is now using the GL2 backend, and Xaccess uh, will show you now uh, how to run the. Yeah, we will show later that you can pull out the applet out of the, the thing as well. Oh, yeah, right. So that works as well. Full screen, etc. So this is using Nude, Nude in an applet. So this is a native Nude in an applet. 
uh, and you just being used uh, to run on uh, mobile and desktop devices. Uh, you don't need to rely on AWT etc. Right. And this right. <laughs> and so this is a Nokia N9 phone uh, with an XL11 server inside, and you see uh, the ES1 backend of uh, uh, working here. Uh, it doesn't have an HDMI output, so we, you know. But you see some big pixels here, right? I mean, can you read? <laughs> okay, so it's working. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, go to, uh, you know. And he wants to show it on the Tagra too, so that's using the ES2 backend. And that's a Toshiba AC100 uh, device. Okay, we skip it or show it? We skip it. Okay, we skip it, we have no time. GDX is a cross-platform game API, and you can um, uh, it offers you like uh, similar to Jog and many features. There is no one-size-fits-all approach, so it has a, allows you to have a flexible workflow. Uh, same thing available on desktop and mobile, utilizing the Jog and backend. So the, the original backends uh, were like forced to use. Uh, had full, let's say, uh, a desktop device, but with stock and you could run, run your little GDX applications, slash games, uh, also on mobile devices. Uh, and here comes the demo. So, like, said, like Sven said, libgdx is many modules, so here we show a picture loader, you can apply effects, for example, so it's uh, quite easy to step in. start uh, developing games, um, and uh, it has a rich library, so if you close this window. Uh, one of the common things in games, you want to have sprites, so you've got a, a sprite batch class, that's useful, you can close it, and it supports many sprites. Yeah, so you can close it. And uh, Libgd has also got uh, a UI toolkit, so you can drag around this dialog. Um, yeah, it's got uh, touch input. You can push the first button to this. Yeah, this is um, top left. We did it. And while using all the uh, the different parts, you can of course uh, create uh, the thing. So. so this this is a complete game, Pax Britannica. It's um, it's ported to the PDX, so, and uh, so now we're using it with the Yoga backend. So Yoga Yoga is uh, doing all the rendering, and this allows uh, the this game to be deployed on both the desktop and mobile. So um, we can try actually to launch this same game uh, uh, on a small embedded device. So this is a Raspberry Pi uh, device you might have heard of. So this is like we, we use it as a headless device. No? Oh, okay. Uh, as a headless device, um, using you uh, directly accessing the BCM proprietary video core 5, etc. Um, thingy, and on top of that, using EGL and OpenGL ES2. Well, it has an ES1 uh, implementation as well, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so now we're going to start the same game that we started on the desktop. The main difference is that on the Raspberry Pi we don't have a windowing system by default, so the game will start directly on top of uh, the frame buffer. But we are initializing OpenGL using the Broadcom drivers, and uh, then you have the LibPDX game running. That was tricky. Okay, so this is another game engine, G-Monkey engine. Uh, G-Monkey engine is more a uh, uh, complete game engine, so you've got an uh, editor. Um, so I will just uh, 
we will start a quick uh, one of the many examples of the with uh, Jane Monkey. Okay. So, for example, this is load, uh, showing how you can load measures, animate them, and uh, uh, stage the scene. So, we, we, we will get back a bit to the uh, uh, Jay Monkey engine later when we talk about uh, various UI, UI toolkits. Um, um, another team uh, is about to deploy uh, Kate Quiz. I don't really know how to pronounce it properly. So this is an old style role game, right? And there's a point. Uh, this is supposed to be a horror game with pixel graphics, and it's made in France. And so we will show a quick uh, demonstration movie that I published. And, and the pixels are intentional, so that is like retro style. and so on and so forth. And then we have uh, a deployed game. Uh, it is now deployed on Android devices, also uh, on Steam. So Steam is currently that work on the Linux version. Uh, I don't, I'm not that sure. On Windows it is deployed. Uh, and it uses uh, Joggle, etc. I'll show the slide. Here's somebody who can play the game. Just in You can also visit the train station to learn more about the game. Either grab my So they use Jock M to uh, uh, take away the all the, the you know the platform details, etc. Um, so they use Joe AL for audio, Joggle for OGL, uh, yeah, and can focus on their uh, application game. And um, right, and uh, thanks to the effort we got from, like they they verified uh, 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 that game uh, at Google, uh, at Google. Right. so it passed the verification. Now we pass to the legacy section, the game section, and now we get into the user interface section. And again, we start with the oldest one and go forward. Okay, so uh, I represent the Nifty GUI. Um, so Jens is not here with us, so I represent it for um, It's a Java uh, library designed in 2007. Uh, it's designed to interact nicely with your existing code. Uh, so you, you, you should think of Nifty GUI like a scene graph that you can add on top of your own game engine or framework. And Nifty GUI is basically a, a scene graph stored in XML that can be done in a modified runtime. So the, this is an example of an XML uh, text file that opens a small rectangle. Um, Okay, so we can show some live demonstration on it. 
So now we are running directly from the source code. So now we need to get it using the ES2 profile. This means that uh, um, this application works on both desktop and mobile. So this is Jens' own uh, live uh, tutorial. And it allows you to create fluid animations uh, with a uh, lot of interactivity. So and this is a com using the common profile GL2 ES2. As Xex has said, it, it runs on both uh, devices. Now he shows the same as a proof. No? Okay. Yep. Uh, she shows the same uh, on the AC. Uh, 100 with the OpenGL ES2 driver. Here we go. Yeah, so this is the exactly the same uh, example, but here we are running on an ARM Tegra 2 device. We are running with Linux. So, yeah, we so, uh, have the same functionality. Cool. And then we have prepared a little video showcasing uh, a few deployed games. Utilizing uh, Nifty GUI, also utilizing JMonkey engine, um, just to give you an impression. Uh, so in the, now we show from since JMonkey engine tree is using Nifty GUI as the main UI toolkit. Uh, many of the demos here is really using JMonkey. Uh, Like you see, yeah, if the game can be customized to fit your own uh, game's uh, feel. So, for example, this is a game where slime take over the world. And of course, then the, the user interface can easily be made slimy. Yeah. game has in the game dialogues you can use it to it. So the intention is you have a headless system again uh, and you can plug in a user interface independent from AWT. Uh, then we have the Jogger and Graph user interface. Um, so this is uh, um, using OpenGL uh, 2 ES2 as well, runs on ES2. And here the uh, like CAD data like uh, uh, curves are rendered on the GPU. You probably have seen this, this is all, you know for years on our web page. You still have to complete it uh, to make a real user interface uh, to be used. So one idea is for example to go forward with Nifty GUI and using graph uh, uh, in Nifty GUI to render the curves. But this has to be seen. Like we, we are actually asking for cooperation. Uh, with, with, with other projects, so we get a little bit of support. So you see all the, so this is resolution independent. Yeah. Okay? And you can see more on our website. And this is, uh, right, so this is the, the curve rendering itself is based, uh, is not based on Lublin as usual. Um, and it is not patented and Rami here, uh, uh, yeah, he, he wrote that paper and, and found some tweaks around the patent country and land and <laughs> mines and so, yeah, so that's a good sign. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
TPU-based. Okay, and here comes comes our new candidate for user interfaces. Uh, so we just met him uh, last month. Like, is it, is, it, is it too late for the slides? He asked. We were happy to have great new slides. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Sambo, and I will show you my HMI. My HMI is a human machine interface framework, primarily developed for big containment and instrument cluster applications. Next slide, please. It started as an instrument cluster for this electric vehicle. It's manufactured in Croatia. The company I work for manufactures it, docking is the name. And later on, it evolved into something much more like industry visualization framework. So today, in the HMI markets, we have a deep gap. On one, on one side, we have graphically impressive applications with poor communication and processing capabilities. On the other hand, we have these old school scatter systems with good processing, processing capabilities, but with plain graphics. So my HMI was built to bridge that gap. Slide, please. It was designed as a multi-platform framework, so that's why we chose Java and Jogam's logo. That means we can run our applications on whatever platform, like Windows, Linux, Embedded Linux, Android, all with the same code. Absolutely no code modifications needed. That's why we really liked Jogam and chose it. It's built around three sets of modules. The first set of, set, set of modules is display modules, like widgets, primitives, animations, and we have communication modules via IP protocol, CAN protocol, serial, or any other protocol. And we have data processing modules for processing the data we want to display on screen. So, now I'll show you a few screenshots. This is from Buster used in our vehicle. It's, it runs on Android and Taylor 2. Processor. This is a SCADA application in the control center for one of our vehicles. It's a firefighting vehicle, you can see it down left. So, like real time information. And the model is actually a 3D model. I will show it later. And this is the latest thing we have done with it. It's a, also a SCADA and remote control application that runs on a tablet and it's used for controlling our machines. And I will show you some live demo demos now. So this first demo is, is the remote control demo. It's meant to run on, on a tablet, but it can also run on Linux, <coughs> like right now. So you, you unlock it. This, turn it on, and here you can control the machine via these job pads. Up there you have the rotation axis for the machine. Those bars left and right show you the track movement, and RPMs. You can go into recording mode. Actually, you first have to record something. So the machine will come back where it started moving for the backward. Here is the tool, like the shovel tool the machine has. Gears. And we have also multiple screens out there. This is the drive mode. We also have the telemetry, which shows real time data about our machine. So this is a demo mock-up for some statistics, like efficiency of the machine, amounts multiple machines.
So this application is using the ES2 profile as well, so the GL2 ES2, so it can run on, on desktop and mobile devices. The cool thing, or the, the, the nice thing for, for him and his team was they started late, so they didn't win through all the AWT hassles and fixed function point stuff. Uh, they just started on a, you know, a blank page without worries. Uh, using Ute and uh, GL2 ES2. Yep. And I have another demo of our another piece of cluster. It's presented at SES this year in Vegas. <coughs> okay, here's the this big screen is the instrument cluster inside the dashboard of the car. Cluster inside the dashboard and this small screen behind. Yeah. This small screen is having like tablets you plug into the, the web. Uh, so, and they take the advantage of the wireless thing, the tablet and the instrument cluster. So, here you have uh, power and vision. So you can enter the menu on the tablet. You can change screens on the instrument cluster to see some extra information, like with this here, here the statistics screen, tires, engine information. Dominic, aka Demo Scene Pacifist. So the second or the third time, I guess, in a row, he won the 4K PC competition of the Revision 2013. So this is his winning entry in 2013. And before he had uh, Electron Multiplizierer and, and another one, yeah. So, like, you have to compress the code in the end in a, in a 4096 byte size exifier for PC. Of course it's not using Java, but he develops using Java. So Jogger here, like like Joggle and Jogger. So Jogger is a convenient enabler, as success likes to say. Uh, it's easy to develop with and so the next stage is to um, yeah crunch it down to 4096 bytes. So that's for sure quite a challenge. Um, yeah and all these demos are available using Jogger. Uh, we have to show a video here because our laptops are not powerful enough to show that. So that's a ray marching argument. So that like this is a most horrible uh, shader code for a shader because you have uh, endless loops. They are almost recursive uh, to implement the ray cast, ray marching. So we cannot show you this demo on a mobile device.
provides fast object insertion, deletion, raycast queries, and optional minimum spatial size limit. So here is an example of uh, 2D uh, spatial division. So you see all these small uh, rectangles in green are where the objects are. So it divided the space into these small objects. And there is a raycast for intersection with the object for fast query. Next one. Here it's the 3D example with access online bonding boxes. And there is also a ray. I'm not sure if you can see it in yellow. Okay, so here all the options is to define the minimum x, y, and z for each uh, uh, opt object. And, yeah, and this is the work of Mark uh, Rainsford, who put it at 10, so I'm just talking. Uh, so GeoGebra is an educational package for uh, many different levels of education, teaching kind of mathematical uh, formulations. Um, different geometry and algebra formulations um, and easily, easily visualize them with different uh, different tests and um, different ways of presenting it to, to students and, and other interesting interesting results. Um, it does have full 2D and 3D uh, presentation. <coughs> we have a web start example here. Should get served up. I believe this is just using the, the regular web start. Yeah. yeah. So they're mostly using Jogam for their uh, their 3D presentation view. I haven't played with it a heck of a lot uh, yet, but it, it works quite well out of the box, and it's easy easy to start up and easy to deploy for them. So. SciLab is a free open source software for uh, visualizing and computing numerical, numerical data. It has lots of different visualizations. It has lots of different interop with uh, not only Java, but it's C and C++ consumers and providers, and uh, I think even uh, Python. So it, um, it can produce numerical results. It can consume numerical data and uh, instrument data and present it to you kind of in one, one unified interface. Um, it seems very powerful, but I haven't played with it that much as well, just presenting there. Their results. It's, it's, it's a product of visualizing your own data or doing numerical simulations or it has, it has many different options for visualizing this stuff. And this is another uh, example, um, more like a pure math uh, visualization tool for math functions, data. Good. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Good. I, I, so sorry, like we haven't really uh, used all these applications. Uh, we just want to give you a little impression, a teaser, if you uh, like to say, and uh, to give you the possibilities. So this probably is a math function or something, and uh, yeah, you can visualize it and inspect it. Yeah, like uh, I'm walking around in it and I can stand on, on the surface of the function. Okay. 
and all these uh, utilities, like they all moved to the new Doggo 2 uh, release, and yeah, so it should work on all platforms. Good. Next. Yeah, this is from the TU Berlin, I guess, Technical University. And here's BioJava, uh, that's a framework for pro processing biological data. Uh, yeah, uh, please start with that. So, the most impressive thing uh, my, my, yeah, from my view is that they offer the data itself they have found uh, publicly. So, um, and they have created this, this uh, 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 Java based 3D viewer for all these proteins. Molecule change. Yeah, and then you can play with it, see it, get an impression. Uh, what it all means. And probably also for analysis, uh, you know, whether they are effective or not for whatever purpose. But I'm not a bio expert. <laughs> so, good. And the old classical world wind. So finally, they uh, ported over to Drogo 2 as well. Yeah. So, this is now using uh, Drogo 2. Like, if you would go through the hurdles, Kirxis did that actually, uh, changing the rendering engine uh, to use OGL ES2. That, then, that would enable world wind to run on mobile platforms as well with the same code path. But this has not been done officially yet. So. Worldwind is uh, very good if you would like to have uh, a visualization of Earth and maybe add uh, your own information on top of it, like overlay, uh, volumes. Uh, yeah, so you can, it's an API, so you can yeah, place large dishes on top of the Earth, like a free will. If you like, you can add also visualize terrain data, scientific data, uh, uh, population. Heat, environment, etc. Yep, cool stuff. There's one more. Okay. And so here's processing. Processing is. Uh uh, a language used uh, uh, mainly today for your generative uh, design by artists who want to have a simple way to program their own tools so you, you can have it uh, create your own brushes, uh, easily create your own painting program if you like, make uh, programs that paints a uh, whole canvas for you. Uh, so this is the main user interface. Uh, if you don't have any any code, it will still open a window for you. Um, it, it's rich on examples, um, so you can easily create. Uh, uh, this is a shader based example. And you and uh, when you're using uh, 3D in processing, it's using the yoga to access the GPU. That you have a customer. And so all the code to render this square is uh, like one A4 sheet. So by creating small sketches, you quickly get uh, a lot of visual results. I just show that it, it's process is filled with a rich example except with uh, many topics uh, there exist several books about processing um, I think it's not even somewhere and they, on, online they also have a shader documentation tutorial I guess, right? yes, so here's a you know, just drawing and looks very easy and then you can extend it gradually and uh, 
using your own classes. Um, let's see if you can have. So, so this is an application using uh, three classes. And uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> so what you paint uh, walks away. And here's Johnson.
Also, we added modeling new tools using graph. Uh, show you a bit. Okay, so we see really combining your data that comes from data warehouses all around and uh, from the CAD models, from CAD tools, from Revit, uh, AutoCAD, and Station, etc. Okay, so why do we use Joggle? Joggle provides a low level API binding to OpenGL, so which allows us to develop a native like graphics engine using Java. Maybe native like it's, uh, it's just a thin, a thin layer for uh, going into the pipeline, graphic pipeline, and it's very performing and lightweight, and there is a clear separation between graphics pipeline and the rendering system which it provides. And it's cross-platform, so we are able to uh, work on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. Okay, so I'll just show these. And this is check the key. It comes back. Right, server, so 
So this is Josie. So we have a Josie one Josie L slide. Yes, we will. So that's that's for actually the next year, like this for this year, like the next year we will work on Josie L and our probability as well as on mobile. We had the time to prepare, a, let's say Nexus 10 Android Nexus 10 Josie L demo. Um, so it is available now at, at least for selected devices. Uh, sadly, we have to sign an NDA still to get. It. right now show you a mobile uh, demo, but like in the next month we will provide a video and put it into the source code that, that we look up, we, we will try to look up uh, the Josie L driver wherever they are. Um, you know, right from the screen, yeah. I mean OpenCL, you, of course you know that like a, a computing uh, API for distributed, uh, yeah, distributed computing, uh, CPU, GPU. And uh, so our goal for, for the next six months is mo the mobile as well as OpenCL 1.2 and now 2.0, etc. Uh, support. So GeoCL is one of the core yoga modules where we provide uh, bindings to uh, the OpenCL API. Yes. And then there's OpenAL, the JoeAL, OpenAL binding. Success was so nice to become the maintainer of such. Yes, so uh, URL uh, allows you to access OpenAL, and OpenAL is an API that allows you to easily uh, use spatial sounds. You can place audio sources in a 3D space, and URL will effectively mix the audio sources and compensate for, for example, Doppler effects if you're simulating moving audio. Uh, uh, if you have some audio source that is moving, it will uh, do the mixing for you. And in the last three months, we provide the OpenL soft uh, uh, library. Uh, so we pre built it on our servers uh, for our platforms, but OS X, because on OS X, we use the native OS X uh, OpenL uh, library. And OpenL, I mean, you, you have seen all the demos here with sound, so like Jake and I don't know. Uh, something else, and so they were using uh, Joel. Uh, so this is a use case for UL. We had a user that approached us, and they were searching for a solution with very low latency. They were using uh, some recreation laser gun, it, and it uses a very small embedded uh, arm computer. So it's like a gum sticks with one seven millimeters times eight millimeters. So it's really like a gum stick. And it, they run it in headless mode, that means they didn't have a GPU or a screen, and so and they had some, they needed it to not consume that much memory. Because they tested different audio backups, and um, so they tested JJAC, that was working fine, but unless when it ran out of memory, uh, there, there were other providers combining to open out. But they had uh, dependencies on graphics, so they could not use it to just an interest audio. The regular Java sound had instant consistent latency, so when you from from stimulus on this uh, device until the sound was heard, it could be uh, up to 30 millisecond delay, and that was regarded as not satisfactory. But by using UL, they had a perfect band of uh, latency efficiency, and they didn't run. Yeah, out of RAM. Right, and ticket to write, they use it too. Okay, next. So this is our media player, we showed that last year as well, and this will show also... Um, okay. yeah. So this will now has JOL support, finally. So thanks to Texas kicking ass and implementing. And... Um, Now we have audio, the audio is pushed in 
and buffers like we have wood for buffers. So it's uh, it doesn't block the rendering. Um, yeah, we still have to buffer the frames itself. But we just finished that. So this is working now on, on uh, FFmpeg. This is FFmpeg backend uh, using the Joe AL audio sync and um, we also have the Android backend. We have to work on the old Max backend for the Raspberry Pi and have to think about deploying libav um, with free audio and video codecs uh, in the same style as we deploy uh, OpenAL software for JoeAL itself so that you can rely on having a workable uh, a, a video and audio recorder. So, so this is just a demo uh, to play a video but, but I mean, you, you can use it for just grabbing frames of the video Grabbing audio frames, video audio frames, textures, sound, uh, that's up to you. And we have also one guy, Sexus, uh, who wants to talk about the Raspberry Pi. Like he wants to create a video box for the Raspberry Pi, like a setup box. Yeah, so we have a user that approaching us and uh, uh, would like to focus on Open Max. And uh, we have an Open Max backend, and this would allow you to use. Uh, like a Raspberry Pi for audio video products. We don't show the, the, the Android demo, uh, we showed it last year. Um, you can just download it if you want the Android packages and see for yourself. That's a movie, movie Cube Zero. Okay, so, so now we come, uh, come to the uh, OpenGL uh, profile enhancements. Yeah, so it gets more and more spaghetti, but there is an order in it. So on the left side, <coughs> we have the fixed function pipeline. On the right side, we have the, um, the, the programmable shader. And um, on the top, I mean, yeah, you can zoom in a little. Uh, we have the common profile. So we have, for example, GL2 ES2, which is quite, quite uh, interesting. Can you show that? Oh, that's it. And. Um, and if you use that profile, uh, you can be almost sure that, okay, that using that profile, it will run on ES2 devices, ES3 devices, and, and desktop, etc. devices. And uh, as you see here, there is the GL ES3 as well, as the common profiles GL4 uh, ES3 and GL3 ES3. So the, the ES3 support, we um, just edited and tested it with the MISA 901 or 91 drivers from uh, Intel and uh, works quite well, um, meaning passing tests uh, so far. Uh, we have no native ES3 driver yet, uh, but when they come up, of course, uh, we will test on them, so they are supported. And now comes the answer to the question of new, what is new? So, um, so these are the windowing toolkits. So, like in the aspect of OpenGL on the bottom, like the last on the, the bottom bar, that is platform independent. And and the whole motivation of using uh, Toggle is not just like oh I, I like to program in Java. No, um, one thing is also that you don't want to deal with all the uh, platform dependent layers. Uh, for example, one user of Torquem is using native code to render, uh, like they have a native uh, implementation of their renderer, but they're using Joggle uh, to actually create an OpenGL context because they don't want to deal with all these platform dependencies uh, because that's a pain in the ass. So GLX, Wiggle, etc. And then what we do is we abstract all these levels. Um, with our uh, uh, native window class and um, the implementation of the native window is for example AWT, SWT uh, which you know and we have our own implementation which is NUDE. NUDE is different to AWT and uh, uh, for example that we focus on what it should do. Uh, create a window, destroy a window, native parenting, um, for example, we can have a window parenting 
the HR window to a new window or to an AWT, SWT window. So that what you have seen uh, with C3D, there was a swing uh, uh, UI, complex UI, and uh, it was using nude uh, canvas AWT, uh, that AWT component. Um, that means it, it, it has a new child window and due to the fact that Nude is uh, multi-threading uh, clean, let's say, and we, are, we uh, handle all the input events uh, without locking the AWT, um, you, um, you saw, for example, or there's a fluent uh, navigation to the model. Uh, even though the model is huge and rendering, and maybe even rendering is lagging, but you still have no uh, blocking in your uh, animation. And, and we also emphasize that if you are using Nude, you can be sure that you can open a window of all the platforms that Yogam supports. So you get uh, support for Android, you get support for Raspberry Pi, and uh, you can open windows on system where there is no native, and no operating system provided window manager, for example. So, and due to the limited feature set, uh, it is quite easy for us to fix the bugs and to provide you these limited features. Um, you know, and, and so you see input events. So this is a new multi-monitor stuff. Um, like we have multi-monitor support. So this is a picture with a virtual machine and um, showing uh, four monitors. So this is now spanning two, full screen spanning two monitors. And here, full screen spanning all four monitors. So this is Windows and X11. Uh, showing Windows and X11. So that's uh, these were our latest addition uh, you know, to a new monitor devices. And if you if you exit your application, it will revert to the original state. Yeah. So this is like the complete conclusion. So we came to the end. What's the time? Not quite. Oh, we have five minutes. Okay, so this is our love, shape, and colors. Next, all devices. You've seen that. Tuck. One more. One more. One more. So on the left side, you see. That, so this, these were part of our last custom slides. Um, so the general love that means. Oh, this is a Java, uh, Java abstract. All these CPUs, and we come uh, in the game when we abstract. Um, all the DSP parts of the device, of the controllers, uh, implementing OpenGL, OpenCL, OpenAL, etc. So that all this crazy chaos mix you have uh, that you actually can use uh, one code base and run on, on all the devices, mobile, uh, yeah, as you have seen today. Yo. And I guess we stop here. Uh, we'll go to the thank you page. So, oh, Maven, right? Maven, well, uh, Mark Rainsford, so he did, sorry, so he completed our Maven uh, uh, support. Um, and now you can use Maven. We have, uh, we are in the official Maven repository, so I don't know the passwords now. Is it central or something, right? Maven central. Yeah. And we have our own test repository, so where we, you know, put in some pre releases before we bought the sample. So that pretty much works. And he also added some uh, aliasing of, of Android and uh, desktop to create a Maven project which runs on those platforms. Right. Yes. Okay, so if you have any questions left, if, if, there, if there's anybody left, <laughs> then uh, uh, yeah, please. Oh, and there again, there's a free t shirt nobody wants. So. <laughs> yeah? Uh, how does the MyHMI uh, deal with the system? Is it news new? Or no. Is it the other? no. So, so the new handle is the, the opening and the closing and deal with that level. And then your MyHMI basically does a lot of the things you've got to do. So, can you then update you? Yeah. And the keyboard and mouse are all pointer input devices. They, that's an event listener model. So you can attach yourself, your listener to that, like the OpenGL event listener, and then receive all these events. Yeah, so so Mute uh, also handles input. So when you do a gestures on Android, you receive them as a Mute, as an event. Yeah. 
So it's multi-touch capable following the W3C recommendation or something uh, about multiple pointers and uh, right and, and it has monitor change events so you can be informed when the monitor changes resolution etc. So it sounds like it's really the way to go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Newt is uh, Yogam's recommended solution to open a window before you do open gear rendering. So, yeah, so you just bypass swing and you don't use AMUT. That's correct. Uh, you, right. You, you don't use Java's uh, legacy classes to open a window. You, Newt implements a GL window. You say instantiate that and you tell it to open editor. And all the UI demos you've seen, so that's the whole purpose, like don't use the other stuff anymore. Render it in OpenGL as you wish. And, yeah. it, it's actually possible to place a new to in the inside uh, AWT campus. Yeah, yeah, we, we showed that with, with Rami in C3D. Uh, that was a new, opaque new window, a child window attached to, to an AWT uh, canvas. And uh, operating as a nude window, native nude window, like that's just a nude code, but you see it in your layout, in your AWT swing layout. Uh, but that only works if it's opaque, so if you don't cover it. So there's no set stack in it. So what would the advantage be of putting nude in, in between? Because they still, for example, the application still has a lot of UI which is not yet ported to an AWT agnostic approach. So if you have complete, like, so if this is like a, your, your simple migration step. So you don't need to jump uh, over the whole uh, river, right? That's actually the approach we took in Johnson with our legacy code. Um, it's still mostly a swing AWT application, but all of the three rendering windows are actually new. Um, we just swapped out the one window for new, and it behaves very well with the rest of the application. Well, when, why did you use new? Uh, it's for the other drag and drop windows in the little toolbar at the top. Here. We just we didn't touch that code at all. We only touched the rendering code. We just replaced all of our, all of our 3D rendering windows without touching the rest of the program. It was completely a drop in just to, to see how it would go. And eventually, we'll probably keep moving along that path as we have time. It's just it's just the time and not upsetting the rest of the application. Uh, one other use case is, uh, for example, when we used the applets inside the web browser, the uh, Newt allows the applet to jump out outside the page and go full screen, for example. Um, so, so that's a uh, thanks to Newt. Uh, and uh, like when many people think about OpenGL, they uh, Newt, uh, OpenGL itself, they do not have functions to open Windows. So OpenGL relies on that programmer uses the platform, they initialize a platform native surface and this surface is different if it is on Windows, Android and Linux. So Newt hides this abstraction. So it uh, initializes the platform independent surface and then you can use the platform independent open running on top of it. And that's why the, the final application becomes platform independent we have abstracted away all the platform dependent parts. Yeah. Um, a couple questions, one, one generic, one kind of technical. But um, I have an application where we're actually, you know, most of the time we have to run with software rendering as opposed to hardware, which I know these days is, you know, nobody wants to do anymore. But it's because a lot of our stuff is virtualized and hypervisors just don't do GPU virtualization very well. So do you guys have any recommendations on, I guess, a good software you know, implementation of OpenGL to put under? Depends, depends on the system. So, in general, it's going to be Windows. Ah, so I have seen, uh, I guess, from not, not from Oracle, from the other who developed Mesa, but VMware, they use a Mesa 7 software renderer implementation within their box, so they so the Windows driver actually uses Mesa, and it's a Mesa VGA driver. And that, that leads actually to another question which is a, a little bit more detailed, which okay. is that one thing I've noticed on Windows is depending on when you actually start making your OpenGL calls, it will load one or another DLL to actually do the render. 
So unless, for example, I force the use of the Mesa DLL right up front with like a load library or one of those, it may actually down the line decide, oh, I'm going to go grab the Windows implementation of OpenGL, and all of a sudden it fails because the device I'm running on doesn't have the hardware support it's looking for, as opposed to going to Mesa, yeah. which we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Do, you, do you guys have any way of sort of saying, no, use this stack or this driver as opposed to another one? We, so I put down, I'm unsure if we have a library parse which you can set up with a property. I, maybe we have, maybe we don't, but we could edit. So this will like, would be the quick and dirty uh, way of doing things. Um, like on Windows, you have that so-called client driver thingy, so that still doesn't really pay the bill. Um, and but for enforcing like the Java library pass and all that just yes, 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 work. Yes, right, right, right. It just ignores them thoroughly. It is, well, so, so, uh, yeah, all the discussion about multiple GPUs and multiple OpenGL drivers, uh, there are some extensions, etc., to select that. So you have XRR 1 and 4, so that's why X11. Um, so there is the idea of selecting the GPU driver um, based on some magic in the driver library, like whatever. So that's for example the Optimus problem you have heard about, like Intel, Nvidia, AMD. Um, yeah, but I, okay. So if there is an extension, we will we should use it, right? And create a solution for that. So you are not the only one who is asking for that. Okay. So right now our GL profiles, they say, yeah, it's probably hardware, it's probably software rendered what we have. Like on Windows, you can say, oh, I want a bitmap, a bitmap uh, a context, uh, and by accident you get the GDI driver, because the hardware accident driver doesn't do it. Um, so that's a, that's a way how some select the software rendered. Um, but of course, this is no pro not a proper workflow. Uh, Cool. But I do want to say thank you to all of you guys uh, because we, we actually do use it and it's you know, very successful across the board. And our main application actually uses Worldwind, which is dependent on Joggle, which you know we're, we're currently working through the whole shift from Joggle 1 to Joggle 2. Mm. Oh, so cool. I've, I've been working directly with the NASA folks as, as part of all of this. And, um, it's tell them, tell them to use the ES2 based profile, <laughs> so so they can skip the Android. Any more questions? Please don't be shy. Don't be shy. Take a t-shirt. Take two or three <laughs> for your family and wife. Uh, we have a lot. <laughs>